Now, as this is the only programme on television that doesn't feature Jonathan Ross, we thought we'd try and work him in by apologising to him. In the last series, we said that Mr Ross had spent millions of pounds on a number plate that spelt Ross. However, our source for this story was the Sunday Express, and it's not true. So, Jonathan, we're sorry. We would like to formally retract any suggestion that you are a big dandy with more money than taste. Good, well done, that's got out of the way now, news. Um, there's a new golf that happened while we were away having our summer holidays. There it is. Uh, we'd love to tell you what it's like, but we can't because we went one mile down the road in it and the clutch went. <laughs> right, now here is the news and we'll stick with coupes and this is the new Alfa Romeo GT. Uh, on sale beginning of next year, you can have a 3.2 V6, going to be... 20 to 27,000 pounds. I've actually already driven it and I rather like it. I think it looks great. I think it looks brilliant. No, I don't. It's rubbish. No, it's fantastic. <laughs> What's going wrong with you at the moment? You keep not liking really nice. No, no, honestly, cars. we haven't got a photograph of it from the back. Oh, but no, it's I got have. a really. Yeah, OK, we're going to see that. that. It's just a bit. I like Vanessa it. Vanessa Feltsy. <laughs> it's just. I'm not sure. It's styled by Bertoni and I'm not sure that he isn't a bit. You know, he designs with his right hand and actually he's left handed. No, no, it's all not. The, all the great. I don't know how much is it going to be. Well, twenty to twenty-seven thousand pounds, we think, but well, that's not what? official. Twenty thousand for a cheap one, and then twenty-seven. Well, twenty thousand for a one-point-eight twin spark, the three-point-two V6, probably about twenty-seven thousand pounds. That's the one I drove. The only thing I would just say, though, about owning an Alfa Romeo is you have to, in order to be petrosexual, yes. yeah. you must at some point have owned an Alfa Romeo in your. You've had one, haven't you? I have had one. Have you Which had one? Yeah, I had one. I had a one-six-four. I had a GT V6, and so you. Oh, I have never. Ah. <laughs> He's not a proper pet. You're not well, a proper. How long have I got to have it for? Ten minutes. Well, well, can't only... I just go into a shop, sign for it on the credit, and then sign to sell it on another piece? Well, of you could do, but you'd have lost three thousand pounds. <laughs> yes, but I'd only have to drive about a hundred yards from the new to the used sales department, so it could probably only break down It'll, once. Yeah, it will break down. <laughs> no, you're honestly, you've got to do it. Has yeah. anyone here got an Alpha? Yeah. yeah. Are you a Pisces? Why? Nope. What? You are a Pisces with an Alfa Romeo, yeah. What's All that? Pisceans oh, what have. What on earth are you talking about? Star signs. <laughs> Pisceans like a bit of a blub, and there's nothing guaranteed to get the blubbing going. <laughs> it's broken down again. It hates me. It doesn't hate you. It's just an Alfa. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. right. You are a Piscean. <laughs> I don't. Care. And you do have an Alfa Romeo. It's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. But, but I'm a Capricorn, and Capricorns don't believe in astrology. Well, you've got a so... Bentley. <laughs> Capricorns have Bentleys. No, they don't, though, do they? Because you... my mum's got one and she hasn't got a Bentley. She's got a Say It A Rosa. That's not a Bentley. No, they either have Bentleys or Say It A Rosas, Capricorns. <laughs> is that a known fact? Yeah, it's a known fact. But oh, no, I got that right. Two Alpha owners it, one of them's a Jeremy, it. is anybody here a Piscean but not owning an Alpha? Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> That's house logic. No, no, and there's that another thing, because all the Pisceans would have been here, but their Alphas broke down on the way. No. <laughs> See? Right, the news. Now, we've heard from Nissan this week about a recall. Recalls, if you don't know, is when a manufacturer holds up its hands and says, yeah, there's a problem with one of our cars, bring it in and we'll fix it, they tell the owners. Usually there's a thousand, a few thousand, maybe a few hundred thousand. This particular recall is for two and a half million Nissans. Mm. Two and a half million and cars. And what we were thinking was... Where do you get the envelopes from? Yes. I mean, do you walk into the local envelope supplier and go, we'd like two and a half million... And then you've got the photocopying, down yes. at Pronto Print. Um, could you copy this for and me, please? And somebody's given the list right to these people, tell them. But the bit that I like to think about particularly is, at some point, there must, there must have been a moment in an office when somebody realised, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> and they had their long walk down a corridor to the big office and sort of... Yes, what is it, Watkins? <laughs> <laughs> you better not have mucked up again. Um, not another recall, is it? Um, How many is it this time? 100,000? 200,000? Come on, give me the worst. Two and a half million, sir. <laughs> two and a half million cars. I mean, how yeah. much is that going to cost in stamps? Yeah. Exactly. Just before you get the car in to actually fix it, two and a half million stamps. Now, I've found the perfect insight to the German mind here. Audi has launched a new flagship A8. Here's a picture of it. It's the poshest car in the range, and it's being fitted with daylight running lights. These are the ones that are on all the time, like they are on a Volvo. Mm. Now, when Volvo does this, they just wire up the normal lights, so they're on all the time. Mm. But Audi have put low-voltage LED daylight running lights on this car, and they say this has virtually no effect on fuel consumption. Now, they do use power, so I rang up Volvo, and I said, what is this all about? How much do your daylight running lights, how much extra fuel 
does that mean you're using? And they went away and they did a calculation and they came back and they said, to be honest, it's such a tiny amount that we can't measure it. So now Audi have said, yes, but we will half it. <laughs> so now it's even smaller again. And that was the Swedes who, let's face it, are a rational bunch. The Germans have made the Swedes look reckless. <laughs> what sort of an achievement is that? Has anyone come across this 2580 service on their mobile phone? You know when you're driving down the road, there's a record comes on the radio, you think, oh, I really like this, and the DJ Netwalt. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. They never tell you. Can... you. If you dial 2580 right down the middle of the mobile phone, hold it against the speaker, you get a text message telling you what you're listening to. In your I case, even tested it on rubbish. my record collection the other day. It, not some of your stuff. Camel, Snow Goose, got it in a jiffy. I thought it switched itself off. Focus, <laughs> moving waves, got it. Ooh, some poor devil had to listen You've to that. You've never heard of those, have you? I've heard of those records, I've never heard of this system. So, you put your record on... No, no, you don't put a record... Well, you can put well, a record on. Well, then you know what it is, clearly, because well, you put it on. I wonder what this is. I wonder what this is. I know, I'll ring up and find out. Oh, yeah, no. what it is. It says no, on the James, cover. you've got confused again. <laughs> anyway, look, well, however it works is irrelevant, because very soon you won't be able to do it anyway, because, of course, December the 1st, all that telephone law starts off. Oh, yeah. You're not going to be... And it's very complicated from what I can gather, but yeah. essentially you're not allowed... Are you not allowed to touch it, or you can no, press no. a button? Or... I've got it here. In essence, you know this is happening on December the 1st, you won't be allowed to make a mobile telephone call while on the move. But they've had to be a bit careful, because you are allowed to use a hands-free phone. Yes. But they say it will be an offence to hold a mobile phone in your hand or prop it between your cheek and shoulder. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. You can do that. Because if you just had it on your ear and not Between on your, your cheek, ear and, and your forearm. Your forearm. Like I don't think they've covered that. <laughs> What's that thing that you drove last year that was about that big and you loved it? Per oh, the Perodua. Perodua. Okay, the Perodua Kalisa. He drove one. He absolutely loved it. Well, it they nice launched car. a new car. Ran about six thousand pounds. We've got a picture of it here. It's called the Canari. Okay, sounds like a food blender. Um, <laughs> they say it's a multi-purpose vehicle. Now, I can see one use for it. You could use it to stop a door banging in the wind. But <laughs> I'm struggling to think you of could, another use. You could keep a chicken in it. Yes. Just one. You couldn't put two in, otherwise it would be a battery and it would be illegal. Probably. Yeah. Anyone else got any thoughts? No, lower the windows by three inches all round and it would be a bottle bank. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not sure it's going to work as a car, though, which is what I think they've got in mind for it. That's anyway. a ridiculous idea. Well, let's do the news, then. Yeah, okay. let's do it. OK, yeah. news this week. Uh, this week, in fact, it has become illegal to use your mobile phone in the car, as we know. You're not allowed has to it? hold it. Yes, yes, it's... Oh, it's I didn't fine. know that. You may have heard mention, <laughs> may have heard mention of this. Um, but apparently, it's not legal to talk on your telephone, but you can still send text messages. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, the police can still do you for reckless driving, as always, but under the new laws, texting genuinely isn't covered. <laughs> if it's on your dashboard in a little holder, you know, the, the yeah. usual things, you can still... Drive along and text? Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm going to have a terrible crack. Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, there was a marvellous uh, thing. I was listening to Radio 2 this week. <laughs> no reason to mind, yes, it's a very good radio station. And there was a marvellous letter on it from a guy who said that uh, he thinks this new law is a very good idea because he said he'd seen a woman driving along the middle lane of the motorway on the mobile phone. She'd veered in front of him, causing him to drop his razor into his cornflakes. <laughs> which had splashed all over his crossword and ruined his day. Well, yeah, that's just, so I think the mobile phone bans are very good idea. They're lethal. Yeah, they Send are lethal. Tech. Not much going on in the world of cars at the moment, because obviously we're heading toward Christmas, but there are one or two new ones we ought to bring you up to speed with. Uh, Peugeot have uh, announced that they're going to do a new uh, 407 to replace the 406. We've got a picture of it here. It's a bit sort of... Uh, mm. It is very like that. However, I will just say... <laughs> It's got double wishbone suspension front and back like a Ferrari in a Formula One car, so it should be very nice to drive. The police, it seems, are tired of people ripping up and destroying their speed cameras. It's 
apparently it does go on. So they've decided instead they're going to use old people. <laughs> Sounds like a very good idea. They're, well, they're going, to, they're going to arm, it's a pilot scheme, they're going to arm vigilantes with speed guns and then send them out into their communities to zap people. Or to shock what? their neighbours. What <laughs> kind of a person is going to say, yes, that's the job for me, I'll get a speed camera and... It's a job for Paul Burrell. There you go. He's, <laughs> he's, he hates you already. He's done his employers. Now I'm going to do my neighbours and friends. But what kind of a country are we living in where people actually think that there will be people who say, yes, I want to go and catch that bloke at number 27 doing 31 miles an hour? And the point is, the only people who will have the time to do this, and even the police, I'm sure, will admit this, are retired people. It's going to be old people in cardigans with little... Yes, actually, we're cardigans. safe. We're safe. Let's imagine the scene in your little village. Oh, Doris, I think there's a car coming. Get your ray gun, let's go out and have a look. Oh, um, have you turned the kettle off? Do you want to have win? Have you locked all the... Have you been to the lavatory, <laughs> Bill? Because you need to for quite some time. Oh, come on, then, have you locked the door? Have you locked the door? Oh, we've got the cats inside or out. Oh, I don't know. Here he comes. Come on, be quickly. Get your... That's not your radar gun, love. That's your air dryer. Oh, Bill. <laughs> oh, Bill, you've come out in your slippers. I've thought about this, actually. If you wanted to do it really cleverly, if you didn't like your neighbour, just ring him up at work. Tell them the house is on fire and sit at the end of their road with your radar. <laughs> <laughs> Suzuki have a new car coming next year. At the moment, it's called the Concept S2. Here's a picture of it. Um, they're actually not going to call it that when they bring it in. They're going to call it the Suzuki Swift, which it won't be, obviously. No, we doubt that'll be Swift. No. No. You look at that and you go, there's not a Swift no. car. Suzuki sluggish. <laughs> Talk about the new Ferrari. <clears throat> It's called the Scalietti, and it replaces yeah, yeah, yeah. the 456, so it's the new four-seater, and it's gorgeous, and Joe How much is wrong. it? It's about 150, just under 150,000 pounds. How big pounds. is the engine? Uh, it's four point something litres, 4.6. It's 540 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in about four and a bit seconds. I don't like it. You're so wrong. It's very good-looking car. Can we just stop spinning the tape? Hold the tape there. That does not look like a Ferrari. Not your schoolboy idea of wedge Ferrari. It's the problem is, it's designed, it's designed by Pininfarina, OK? Now, Pininfarina's top designer at the moment is a man called Ken. Yes. Now, people called Ken are people you borrow lawnmowers from. <laughs> no great person in history. It was not Ken Rembrandt. It no. was not Ken Chopin. There's never been a Pope Ken, has No, there, there has been a King Kenneth in England. But that was a Kenneth, like Kenneth Kendall. That's allowed, but not Ken. You can't have a Ferrari Ken. <laughs> Actually, it's an interesting case in point. When was the last, and you were invited to join in here, when was the last really good-looking Ferrari? 456. 456 four, five, six. Six now. 575 yeah. five, is a fabulous-looking 355 five, five looked good when it came out, but dated, and actually now looks quite Ferrari, old. and he had one. I always thought the... It's the oh, ball! No, 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 no. <laughs> What do you think? The 412 series. The no. 412? Oh dear. You've got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> beard and no, it's it's Your hair. opinion. It's all slipped down here. <laughs> what don't you like about that? I don't actually like it very much. I'm just interested to know what you don't like about it. I'm not. It's got no arse. <laughs> Neither of you anymore. You've lost quite a bit of weight, haven't you, oh. since the last series? <laughs> I was hoping you'd notice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not your ass. So much we could have made another him out of what yeah. I've lost. <laughs> <ever since. laughs> True. It's no. There must have been a good-looking Ferrari. Ignore Beardy. There must have been a good-looking <laughs> Ferrari <laughs> between the Daytona and now. What? G what? The two eight eight. The vampire I reckon's got it. The two eight eight GTO <laughs> in blood red. Sat up from his coffin. Steve <laughs> Strange over GTO. there. Yeah. He's worked it out. Right, here is the news. Now, if you were watching last week, you will remember that we were asking, have the Italians forgotten how to style beautiful cars? We were looking at a new Ferrari, and Jeremy said rather crudely, I thought, that it had no arse. Mm. Well, now we have another one. It's the Alfa Romeo 8C Competizione. And look at the arse on that, Jezza. Oh, that's a gorgeous-looking thing, that is. No, it's hideous. No, you're wrong. It's gorgeous. It's quite promising. That's a horrid. It's, it's horrid. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful-looking thing. No, no. Have we got that old... The, uh, there's an old Alfa Romeo. What was it called? The Brera. The Brera. Yes. I'm okay, which Jeremy, was a concept car. That, that's better. That is what the next Alfa Romeo should it's look not, like. It's not. Look, it, look it's, it's got a hangover. It's got hooded eyes there. It's all mead and miserable. That is good looking, and I will take no track, and that's what the next Alfa Romeo should look like. And so to the news. Now, I'm sure you're aware on this programme, we're not particular fans of the personalised registration number. We don't play golf. 
However, some people out there do have a handicap, and the DVLA is only too happy to serve them. In fact, they're having an auction of special number plates, and they say they've got something for the music enthusiast. Have a look at this. Now, I'm drums. slightly baffled, because I didn't know that drum kits had to be registered, for one thing. <laughs> yeah. And also, I can't quite see the music connection, because this number plate is for a bloke called Les, who lives somewhere off the B347. <laughs> the DVLA says that that says Beatles. But it I'd like just to suggest that it, it just doesn't. B3, if I were following a car that said B347 Les on it, I wouldn't think, it's Ringo Starr. <laughs> exactly. Can we have a look at some of the others that are coming up? Well, I want you to see if you can guess what they actually say. These have been sold by the DVLA. Look at that. <laughs> This, this I don't get. This I don't because I can see what it says. This was up for sale for twenty-two thousand pounds. <laughs> so you have a bit of an embarrassing problem. Well, you drive around going, and my dicky doesn't work, <laughs> and I'm spending twenty-two thousand pounds advertising the fact. I wonder if you can get floppy on one. Yes, <laughs> floppy <laughs> is what. Well, you'd be driving a floppy. You'd be driving a car with a bit, a big bonnet. Let's have another one. Come on, let's have another one. What's that? There's no eye. Is toast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know? £1,125, and even if it did say toast... Why do you want toast doesn't... on your car? <laughs> you know, <laughs> toast! <laughs> what do you mind as well broccoli? What a stupid word to have on the back of your car! Come What's it all on? Stamps! That's even Why more in the office! <laughs> what do you... It doesn't say stamps, but even if it did... It's just a random elbow. Oh, well, that's very <laughs> right. 1,200 quid. Stamps. 1,200 Oh, yeah, P147 boy, I've met him. <laughs> The point I want to make here is, here we've got a government agency selling us these number plates on the basis that you can tweak around with them to make them say something else. Then you have another government agency with tall hats and plastic shoes booking you for changing your number plate round so it says <laughs> stamps. Absolutely right. Welcome to Britain. Welcome to Britain, everybody. This is the worst country in the world. Yes. There's a new Volvo, the V50 Estate. It's a sort of smaller Volvo Estate. It's 17 to 25,000 pounds out in March. Cheaper than a three series BMW Estate. And you can have four wheel drive. Good. Tell you a car I'm looking forward to. We all know the Hyundai Coupe. It's a car we like a lot. About 14 and a half grand. Very stylish. They're going to be making this cabriolet version of it, which, mm. uh, if it's anything like as good as the Coupe, looking like that, superb. Only problem is, not going to be out till 2007. So, I know, well, How sorry. hard can it be to take a roof off? How can it take four years to saw a well, roof no, off? you could take it off with an angle grinder, I'm sure, but there's a bit more to it than that. BMW have been much faster than that, actually, because uh, we haven't even got the new uh, 6 Series Coupe yet. Already, they've announced, there's a convertible version of it. £55,000 it's going to cost. Looks very nice, apart from the back end, which is... Yes. So, a uh, word of advice, if you take it to a friend's house, always reverse away, then they won't see the bag. This is an unusual thing. Jeremy, do you want to sit back and have a little nap or something? Because you're not going to be very interested. It's about a bike. Oh, Go away, son. God. Um, this is the Dodge Tomahawk. They built one of these things, um, and it's by Chrysler. They put the engine out the Viper, you know, the, the Viper, great big engine. About 420 miles an hour, possibly, potential speed. Let's have a look at this thing. It's absolutely astonishing. They built one. They're going to actually <laughs> sell them through mail order. I don't order. think that's a bike. Well, it's I got four worry. wheels and a Dodge Viper engine. Think, I call that a car. I think they may have been confused. We don't do bikes on this program. Can, what can is this problem? Can I just ask you though, Jeremy? I'm interested in this. What is it you don't get about bikes? I want to try and. I just help don't want you. to dress up like a Power Ranger and drive to a pub and drink orange juice all afternoon. <laughs> You like these cars that you get involved with, and so do I, and I'd never give up a car, but a bike, you are much more, back me up, at one with a bike. Your body You're at one with the bike until you the hit physics. the tree, and then you're at one with that. <laughs> I think it's simply that you know, you know deep down in your heart of hearts, if you were on a bike, you would look ridiculous. Yes, I would, and that's what because it's everyone on a bike with that leather ass. Look at that. <laughs> Look at my bottom. <laughs> oh, I've got a zigzag blue thing on the front of my suit and I'm wearing a hat like a terrorist. Have you ever fallen out of a car? No. Well, there you are. Actually, I have. <laughs> well, driving down the M40, here's a heartbreak, but I've, I've fallen out. That's user error. It's not obligatory.
Uh, and talking of next year, what we're going to do now is give you a few of the cars which will be coming up over the next 12 months. And the first one we want to talk about is the Citroen C5. Now, um, they're going to change its style, which is quite tricky. We've got a picture of it here. There is no style. <laughs> it's just a lump of car. You know, if you were going to do a bank job and you needed a getaway car, that would be ideal, really, because the police would say, what did it look like? <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks back, we looked at the uh, VW Touareg, which we didn't yes. like. Yeah. yeah, that's awful. There is a new version out. It's by some tuners called Abt, who prepare Audi's racing cars. Would you like to have a look at it? Yes, yes, please. Here it comes. Is that not the most vulgar and monstrous <laughs> car you have ever seen? Oh, I love it. It's I think it's fantastic. <laughs> No, no, you don't. I do. Look at I, that front end. Look, it's brilliant. glorious. And I'll tell you something else I know about this, Richard, OK? You know, it's got the V10 diesel engine in it. Yes. They've tuned it up so it now develops more power than a 4.6-litre petrol X5, more than a SL, uh, ML55 oh, yeah, yeah, the big Merc, yeah. Merc, and more than the KNS. So it's hideous. Like, it's going to go like steam. It's fantastic. No, that's brilliant. It's revolting. It's, it's got big drug dealer wheels. 22 and yes. inches of wheels. Blacked-out windows for... Pimps. It's just, it's a superb car. You really like that? Yes. yes. You think yeah. that's fabulous? Yes. You think it's better than a Ford Explorer, for example? Oh, good point. No, Jim. obviously not. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not that good. Right. I want to talk about insurance companies briefly. Yeah. Can I talk about some slightly more unusual cars now? Uh, we've been uh, continuing our quest for unusual exhaust, and we've got one here which I particularly like. Now, that's been... <laughs> that's a Mustang, but he's fitted those off, off a truck, I would guess. No, it, I think it could be a submarine in their periscopes. Yeah. Either way, it's unusual, but you can understand, you know, a Mustang, that's the kind of car you're going to customise. This next one is a bit more of a puzzler. <laughs> now you see, I think, I think that's a jet engine, yeah. and that kind of raises a couple of questions, doesn't it? Because if you get a jet engine, there's a lot of questions and forms you've got to fill in with the MOD, mm. and then if you decide to put your jet on a car, you're going to choose something cool, aren't you? Really, you're going to pick an. Who thought they'd put it in a princess? <laughs> if it was me, I'd rather have just fitted a saddle and reins to the jet engine and fired that off down the road. It'd be better. That, that's rubbish. It is rubbish. Can I finally look at, before we move back to more sensible stuff, um, I'm not even going to try and explain this next car. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, he's ironed his Volvo estate, but I don't know why. Right, I, I've got a, a car here. VW are wondering whether to make this. They're scratching their heads thinking, oh, I'm not sure. Well, don't be stupid. Make it. It's got no. a V6. It's a cra Every We love these cars. Do you know something interesting about this? Just stop the film there. There. Because the steering wheel, OK, and the pedals move and the seats don't. Nobody but you would find that too complicated to grasp. I'm sorry. Why do you have, for years, with seats that move about? This lot, they said, no, we'll fix the seats in place and then you move the whole dashboard. And that's ridiculous. I just know you'd end up sitting, I can't work it, Miss That's like, I'm saying I'm too far port. from the television, I'll knock my house down and move the whole thing <laughs> six inches nearer to it. As your poor ageing yeah. brain can't cope. Sticking with our theme of the Germans, here's a worrying piece of news. You have to bear with me, take a second to get there. Mercedes, next to their factory, they have a car park. Into that car park, they put all the new cars as they build them. So they line them all up, all shiny. Mm -hmm. Their problem is, every year, there are massive hailstorms. Massive. Big hailstones come down, ruin the paint on all their brand new cars. Mercedes, being Mercedes, obvious solution, ah, well, just control the weather. So they've learned a way of sending aeroplanes up, and they drop chemicals on the clouds, and that in turn breaks down and dissolves the hailstones. No hailstones, doesn't destroy But this the is a big problem. Well, this is a big problem, because those hailstorms came for a good reason. God sent them, and God sent them with good reason, because just up the road from the Mercedes factory is the German wine-producing area. God doesn't like German wine, let's be honest. So every year, radio. God sends hailstorms to flatten the German vines, yeah. so we don't have to have any blue nun and black tower. <laughs> and now Mercedes has gone along. Ah, we have got riddles of, oh, we have got riddles of clouds. More German wine, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. It's terrifying. Oh, it's bad news. No, but I just wondered, why don't they just, for example, build a shed? I, well, because they're German. Well, they're thinking, Germans, this would be simple. If it's hailing, I don't Nine, think... it is easier to send the Messerschmitt into the clouds and... <laughs> what have you got? Stagecoach. These are the bus operator people. They've come up with something remarkable. It's a 94-seater, double-decker coach. 
which will take you between Oxford and London or Glasgow and Edinburgh for a pound. And they've said, we're going to take the frills out of bus travel. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> But believe it or not, okay, I was, I said, well, what are, but there were some, they've taken out the telly, the woman at the front with the microphone who points out the Tower of London, and the lavatory. What? There's no lavatory on the bus. Didn't you? Do you have, do you have lavatories on buses? Don't worry about it, Jeremy. Does anybody never here have, know? Do they have a lavatory? Of course you have lavatories on buses. Of course they do. Have you not used one? You've got a Lotus exit. Actually, that's why you'd go on a bus, obviously. <laughs> have you never um, tried the lavatory? You have, you've never I've been never on been a bus. I've never been on a bus. What are you on I can about? show you how they work. Look, here's... You sit next to somebody like that, but there's a little wall about that thick. He's parking his breakfast. Trousers round ankles. I'm reading Woman's Own because I'm, you know, 85 year old And he's just driving along the M40 like that. And you're having I'm, a I'm, I'm number getting two. Rid of, yes. He's, he's reading the paper. Like on a bus yes. And now they've taken the lavatory out. Yes. Yeah. But what really amazes me is this. OK, it's got 94 seats. They say we can sell the seats for a pound. To maximise profits, they've taken out the lavatory, which is obviously the size of one seat. So they've made an extra quid. <laughs> by delivering a load of constipated is, people to Oxford. The next thing that's going to happen is people will be with primus stoves cooking their lunch on the floor and live chickens, and people arriving on the underside of Eurostar from Azerbaijan will see one of those things go by and think, <laughs> we haven't, we've gone around a big circle, I'm back in Azerbaijan again. Got this is the third one. world, for God's sake. Actually, if there's I no lavatory, they should just get rid of the back window and have a plank with holes in it. In fact, that's just like following a, a rugby tour, because they've yes. always got their backside. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, no difference. Seriously though, Stagecoach, I've worked this out. If you want this business venture to be a success, seats for a pound, 94-seater coach, don't take the lavatory out of the bus, make every seat a bog. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Land Rover Discoveries, you know how they're bought chiefly by murderers, burglars, robbers? <laughs> it's a bit sweeping that, Jeremy. I, I promise you, they are. All of them. All burglars have discoveries. Are you sure? Yes. I mean, I'm not trying to say it the other way round. Not everyone in a discovery is a burglar, but all burglars do have discoveries. There's a new discovery coming along next year, and it's going to have a ladder chassis. But what I'm interested in, if we get up a picture of the old discovery, you know this kink in the back? Why did you need such a tall boot? Well, for a bit of space. Right, but you know, whose dog is that tall? <laughs> it is a, oh, I need extra headroom for my dog. Could be claustrophobic. No, a dog's like a hamster. No, no, it's, it's not, not. No, it's bigger. Yeah, it's different. Have you, uh, if you were to, no, I'm not saying you should, but if you were to shave a hamster... <laughs> I don't mean you should go out and do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> it's, but you been, know, it's been great doing this show. They're tiny. Hamsters are tiny. Well, there's a lot of... Dogs are like that. They are. OK, the news for this week. And can we start, please, with uh, a Top Gear apology if you missed the program last week because the BBC in its wisdom decided to move us from eight o'clock to starting at seven o'clock. If it's any if it's any consolation, we missed it as well. Dear, I, I, he's not joking. Yeah. I got home flicked on the television just in time to hear myself saying good night. Yeah. It's a strange feeling. We didn't feeling. know. We no. didn't know they were gonna move us. And the problem is the reason they're doing this, they hate us. They the do. BBC hates this show. They don't like us. We're too carry. Yeah, too, too carry. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we've got to shape up. I think we really we, we need to get ourselves back in the BBC's good books. I think we're going to rename this place the Nelson Mandela Studio. Yeah. That's a good name. <laughs> and we're going to put some speed bumps on our track. Bus lane would be nice. I'll just get me clips on. And a on cycle me. lane. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just saying to uh, Darkest Howe the other day at nice the bus. lesbian. Uh, Whole Food Collective. I know it well. Is that where they pipe the whale music? That's, That's the one. We were trying to raise money for Bosnian uh, battered wives. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was saying we really are going to shape up. You know, I mean, look, he's got the slippers. Yeah, I mean, sandals. He's got the Guardian. We're, we're in good shape, I think. Maybe we get our slot back now. Please. I had a great story this week. You know, Travelodge, the people, little hotels at the side of the road, they've decided that now they are well open up their rooms, rent them for half an hour at a time, to tired motorists during the day. <laughs> so that's your fiver. A gentleman and a lady motorist decide they need a little bit of a that's, break. I immediately thought the same as you. A, a gentleman and a lady motorist are driving along and say, let's have a nap, nap. <laughs> for, for half an hour, for a fiver in the travel lodge. But no, they're actually saying the rooms are only single occupancy. They'll only allow you in there on your own. So why would you want to have a... It's his, yeah. I've just been looking at this own. picture of uh, Pamela Anderson and I need a nap <laughs> for, <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs>
they started recently using lie detectors, so uh, they use them over the telephone so that when people try and con them out of money, you know, say, tell them lies, they can find out. Uh, the latest company to start doing that is eSure, and I can tell them it's a good decision to start using those because another insurance company said since they introduced lie detectors on their telephones, the number of cars, 25%, in fact, 25% of cars reported as stolen have come back. <laughs> Is it that car that I reported as stolen last week before yeah. you got your lie detectors? I've you know, just looked in my garage and it's there! <laughs> just while I was chatting, I moved the curtains and there it was all along. It's amazing, isn't it? OK, uh, Christmas. We've been getting one or two cards, actually, surprisingly. I just want to show you this one. Absolute peach. Oh, that's Perfect nice. card. That's OK, lovely. it's to uh, Jeremy, Richard and James from Jack Griffiths. That's lovely, that OK, is. lovely. He's got the idea. Unfortunately, the car firms... No clue at all when it comes to Christmas cards. No clue at all. They've got it into their heads that God sent his only son, the baby Jesus, among us, and it was some kind of marketing opportunity. <laughs> no, really, I'm not joking. It's not good. For example, Rudolph, the red-nosed courser. <laughs> it's not about that, is it? I'll give you one, OK? There is no evidence at all in either testament that the three wise men arrived in Bethlehem in a Honda Civic. <laughs> and they did not bring gifts of gold, frankincense and a Honda Fireblade either. <laughs> They've all been doing it. Here's another one. This is TVR. They just sent us a picture of their dashboard. Not only that, it's clearly gone wrong, typically. It says, Merry Christmas. It's probably supposed to say, low oil pressure, emergency. Stop. So, uh, that's rubbish. Now, um, calendars, OK? It's a fairly simple thing, you know, to get a good calendar. When you walk into one of these tyre repair places or, you know, a clutch fitting what? They've got it on the wall. What do you need to get a good one? You need a girl? Yes. Baby oil. Baby oil? Put on her. To put on her, because she doesn't need clothes. And that's it, really. That's it, really. New Pirelli calendar's out. Would you like to see it? Mm. Yeah. You'd like to see that? How could they have got it that wrong? Look! That's just an office accident. She's just, just a, a chair. A woman wearing a jacket last worn by Carol Decker in Tapau has fallen <laughs> off a chair. <laughs> She's probably spilled her coffee. Actually, it's quite a sad incident. That's rubbish. There's no tyres is... on it anyway. No, exactly. Okay, would you like to look at this one? What? Look at it. And do you know something? Do you know something really bizarre? You can't even use it as a calendar because how do you really get going children's nativity play? Well, there aren't any dates on there, it. There are. They're here. Can you try and see this? Look. There you go, look. Oh, you can see it. It does oh, well, that's actually just have. stupid. I think, quite honestly, that's rubbish. we should do a Top Gear calendar. That God, not be, a... be on it. No. No. <laughs> no. But, I mean, how hard what? can it be? Make one, you mean? <laughs> January. Sort it out. February. Where? Not you, Look sir. at Behind people you. edging oh, away. <laughs> Ooh! March. Well, hey, March is sorted. August. Possibly April as well. What are you doing in August? <laughs> Anything? You busy? Are you with him? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you can go and sort that one out. Thank you. Nodding furiously. Ooh, yes, please. I, don't, I was saving you for December, actually. <laughs> um, right, good. I think we've got enough there, then. Yeah. Let's talk about the Jaguar S-Type. Now, uh, next year they're going to facelift this, but as you can see, the face still looks exactly the same. What they've actually done is given it a new boot lid and new rear lights. And I think what happened is a designer went up to it, looked at the front, thought that was the arse, and went to the other end and worked on that <laughs> instead. <laughs> It's not a facelift at all, and it's a bum lift. It, it is. is. And the it's back a... was the bit we liked. Oh, I didn't like any of that car, actually. No, I liked the back. No, it was Jaguar's weakest. Uh, who's agreed with me? That was the weakest Jaguar ever. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. They should just drop it from a great height and be done with it. Now, last week we were having a bit of a row about sports cars, and you championed the S2000 Honda, which was which rubbish. Is rubbish. <laughs> and interesting enough, Honda have improved it. They've given it's it... impossible to improve no, it. No, they've given it a clock... Yeah. ...and a fruitier horn tone. Oh, that's nice. Does it look any different? Well, is it picture, the same? Look at that. Look at that. That's that's a, that's a board. Oh, no, it is a sports car. Majesty. You're still oh, lost. Am though, I right you? about the Honda S2000? No, you Hands up if you think I'm right. Hands up who was the S2000. That's, about that's three a majority. People. <laughs> that was about three people. 300. And you're still lost. <laughs> if it had been dry, and if your two cars hadn't, hadn't turned up, <laughs> it would have won. Would it have won with a new horn tone? 
No, the new horn clock. tone is simply because of the speed it goes, you need a richer horn tone to get the... I was going to use the wrong word there, to get your cars out of the way. It's so the deaf old buggers driving it, because it's a Honda, can hear the horns working at all. Peugeot, you remember the 307 Coupe Cabrio, the 307 CC? They've yeah. now said this is the Peugeot 307 Christmas card. Ooh, very good. Right? Very droll. And what they're actually trying to tell us here, very subtly, is that it takes all year to get the <laughs> horns. <laughs> it's a long job. Not all car firms have got it wrong, though. We've had this card from Skoda. Now, they had all the opportunity in the world for a have a superb Christmas and a fabian New Year, but they've resisted it. It says Skoda on there somewhere. It doesn't. Honestly, I've had it infrared, I've done that with it, I've done one of those, <laughs> is it a 3D thing? There's nothing, it doesn't say Skoda. If you open it up, they've said Merry Christmas, none of that mincing PC rubbish about Winterval and Seasons greetings. Christmas, yeah. yeah, they've mentioned the C word. Handwritten, and the money doesn't go to a printer in Slough. Go it was to a charity. charity. Well, so a round of applause for Skoda. Well, Skoda. Alistair Darling, I'm sure you've read in the papers that he has announced that, yes, there are too many speed cameras in Britain. And what's more, the Department for Transport has said that if we write in, complaining about an inappropriately sighted speed camera, they'll do something about it. So, to save you the trouble, we've had a special map made showing where <laughs> all the inappropriate speed cameras are. So I think you've got them all, then. I think you've got them a lot. I've got a, I've got a great letter here that was in one of the newspapers uh, last weekend. And it's from a retired police officer, and he's spent 30 years basically working out what causes car crashes. And he says it's got nothing to do with slight infringements of the speed limit. Causes he'd most readily identify are careless right turn, aggressive high-speed driving, the born-again biker, you two, <laughs> poor vehicle maintenance, drink driving, and the very elderly. <laughs> and you read that and you think, that's the truth. Talking it's sense. not people doing 34. My mother, my mother has a speeding conviction. <laughs> she honestly considered suicide. I mean, look, she's 12. She's got a speeding conviction for doing 32 miles an hour. Right, that's enough of that. Now, back in 1980, I was a mere lad with a bedroom to decorate. Now, of course, in those days, there was no changing rooms and no Mediterranean hues. All you could really do was slap a poster on the wall. And what's more, there were only two to choose from. The first one was this one of a lady playing tennis. <laughs> and the other one was this, the Lamborghini Countach. Would anybody like to have a guess at what is the third most stolen car in Britain? I don't know, some Beamer or other. Beamer 3 Series is a good one. Good guess. You're all wrong. It's the Vauxhall Nova. <laughs> No. Let's steal one of those. Well, it's not... Exactly, the lady here with a very pertinent question. Why? Yeah. If you're walking for? down a street, you're not going to say, you know, the BM, the Subaru. The Nova. Mm. <laughs> That's me. The... I mean, it's free, isn't it, when you're stealing? Think you don't of have to all pay. the things you would do with a stolen car. Yeah. Ram raiding. I think not. In the... Oh, damn, I've run into this blade of grass and it's disintegrating. <laughs> Joy riding well, again. <laughs> joy. I think not. So there's no joy to be had. What else do you do with them? Shall I tell you why the Nova is being stolen? Go on then. It's economical. It's easy to park. It has a very low loading lip at the back for putting shopping <laughs> in the boot. It's rather easy to get in and out of. It doesn't use much fuel, and it's got a very low insurance group. Which brings me on to another point. The second most stolen car in Britain, the Land Rover Discovery. The sixth most stolen car in Britain, the Mitsubishi Shogun. The eighth most stolen car, the Daihatsu 4-track, and the tenth most stolen car, the Isuzu Trooper. For All years... Four by fours? Yes. For years, the police have been targeting youths in hooded jackets as car thieves. They're all grannies and farmers. It is, they're <laughs> farmers are stealing cars. Stealing cars to go shopping and playing. 